Have you ever been craving tempura but felt intimidated by what I like to call the crown jewel of the deep frying world? Well, today I might have something in store for you that will change this for good. A Taiwanese specialty that is just as crispy and delicious, but in my opinion, a whole lot easier to pull off at home. And once you dip it into its signature companion sauce, you can say goodbye to your tempura frying fears. But first, let me tell you what fascinates me about this dish, which aside from the fact that it's delicious is of course, its history. Let me take you back a few months, where I was strolling the streets of Tainan, which is the much more relaxed former capital of Taiwan. It is also known as Taiwan's number one food hotspot, and I was out on the streets hunting for just those food gems when, out of nowhere, an irresistible aroma pulls me into this little shop specializing in a local specialty the shrimp roll. It is crisp on the outside with a light and crunchy batter that would give any fish and chip shop a run for their money. The juicy, freshly chopped shrimp filling packed inside truly turned this roll into an umami fiesta in my mouth. And as I was munching on this most delicious of treats, I start wondering what this dish reminded me of. And just as I was about to dip it into the wasabi mayo I was served, it suddenly hit me. This dish is giving some serious tempura vibes. Could there possibly be a connection? Well, actually, I'm pretty confident there is. Japan had a lot of influence in Taiwan over the course of history and even colonized it for about half a century. I have a suspicion that this is when the tempura tradition made its way over to Taiwan. But that actually makes me think of a much more interesting food history tangent. As much as you might consider tempura to be quintessentially Japanese, did you know it's actually not? Let me explain. The story of tempura actually starts it's in medieval Portugal of all places. In this country where Catholicism reigned supreme for religious reasons during certain periods in the year like Lent, eating meat was actually a big no-no, sometimes for weeks on time. Instead, people would go for a diet rich in fish, seafood and vegetables. Fortunately, even back in the day, the Portuguese were huge fans of an ingenious way to jazz up these humble ingredients. Dunk them in batter, toss them into hot oil, et voila. Deep fried deliciousness Portuguese style. Then during the 16th century, the Portuguese have famously become a nation of global travelers for trade, culture swaps, and yes, unfortunately, colonialism and conquests. And of course, they bring their favorite delicious deep frying technique along wherever the seven seas might take them. Enter Japan. Back in the day, a nation tucked away and almost isolated from the rest of the world. Here too, for cultural and religious reasons, eating meat was off limits in a much stricter way than in Portugal even. Cooking oil had been quite rare as well and cooking in large amounts of it was almost unheard of. But then all of a sudden along come Portuguese traders and missionaries bearing with them a unique gift. The noble art of battering and oil frying light ingredients. The Portuguese called it tempero referring to the religious season of Lent. And that is obviously where the Japanese name for tempura comes from. With seafood aplenty in Tokyo Tokyo Bay and cooking oil slowly becoming a staple over the centuries, the crispy tradition increasingly became the talk of the town. It set a trend that clearly resonates even today. But let us fast forward to the late 19th century, Japan's era of imperial expansion and aggression. Taiwan had become a Japanese colony and with that, some of its food began to spread on the island. One of these newly established dishes was tiambula or Taiwanese tempura, which to this day can actually be found all over the country. But these fried then braised fish cakes don't look anything like classic tempura, do they? I really wrecked my brain trying to understand what was going on here, but the answer is actually quite straight forward. Tianbula is indeed based on tempura, just not the classic Tokyo kind. Instead, it's based on a related dish called Satsuma Age, which in some parts of Japan is referred to as, you guessed it, tempura. And the fried shrimp rolls I discovered in Tainan? Though perhaps more local in nature, I feel like they bear the unmistakable touch of classic tempura influence. The real Taiwanese tempura, if you will. So now the question is, can we come up with a recipe that gets us anywhere near the glorious Taiwanese fried shrimp roll? Let me know what you think. So first we want to start with our hero ingredient, which is of course shrimp. I'm a big fan of frozen shrimp, unless you're getting yours straight from a fishing boat, 
this is probably gonna be your safest bet to get good quality product. I thought mine first and then for this dish, I love wrapping them in a kitchen towel before squeezing the ever living hell out of them to get rid of excess moisture. Just check out how much liquid we got out of there. Now to a small food processor at our squoze and shrimp, a dash of salt, MSG, sugar, and some white pepper. We'll also incorporate a bit of starch to bind all the juices. And for extra flavor, a bit of sesame oil, as well as oyster sauce and fish sauce to amp up that seafood umami taste. Blitz everything until well chopped, but not completely pasty. A few small chunks of shrimp will do great in here. Transfer the shrimp paste to a bowl, which is when we wanna add a handful of finely chopped scallion whites, a bit of minced ginger, and finally half a finely grated carrot for mild sweetness. Mix everything well and this sticky ball will be our shrimp roll filling. Now there's a little issue here, which is how do we get the roll part into the shrimp roll? In Taiwan, the traditional method is somewhat unexpected. The shrimp paste is wrapped in this web-like looking thing, which is actually a fatty membrane made from pork. It's actually called call fat and among many other places it is used in French cuisine. You're probably thinking though I don't know where to get call fat nor do I want to know where to get call fat and that is totally okay because there's actually a very common and easy to find substitute for wrapping shrimp rolls and that is the good old rice paper. You've probably worked with this before but in case you haven't simply dunk a sheet of it into room temperature water let it absorb the liquid for about 30 seconds and that's all it takes. It's now pliable enough to wrap anything you like in it. For example, a spoonful of our shrimp paste laid out like a sausage. I like to wrap it like a small burrito, bottom first, then tuck in the sides and finish rolling last. You should get around eight nice and taut rolls out of my recipe, which technically could be fried just like this and be delicious, but that would just be a spring roll, wouldn't it? So to make this the tempura-esque dish it is, we need to batter our rolls. And for that, we combine flour, cornstarch, and some salt, then dip each of our rolls into that mix to coat. Then into the remaining mixture, we whisk in some baking powder, followed by an egg, as well as some water. You should get a pale golden, light, and bubbly batter. With some frying oil preheated to 190 Celsius, or 375 Fahrenheit, dip each one of your shrimp rolls into that batter, coat evenly, and and once not too drippy, carefully transfer into the hot oil. You could fry them for about five to seven minutes until nicely golden brown, but I actually prefer to get them out a little before that to leave room for a double fry. But while they're cooling down for that, let us actually recreate the extremely simple but incredibly delicious wasabi mayo I had on the side. Simply combine good quality mayo and a squeeze of wasabi paste with a little lemon juice and a sweetener of your choice. I like agave syrup. Mix well and be amazed at how easy this perfect dip can actually be. Now just give our shrimp rolls a second round of frying, this time until they're nice and golden brown. And this is truly the snack of my dreams and I am so glad I discovered it. Especially with that mayo, I feel like this is so much more streamlined and easier than classic Japanese tempura. I hope you enjoyed this dive into a Taiwanese food classic and its history. If you try this recipe, don't forget to snap a picture and tag me on the gram. I love seeing those every single time. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Happy snacking.